Hello everyone, welcome back to channel Yasha Solomon. It's a long time no see. Uh, I've been busy with life. Uh, let me just get this chair situation. Well, um, I've just been doing a lot of working and life. But uh, this is a top 10 list of like the best films that I watched in 2023 in my opinion and the first five will be um, my honorable mentions um, I'm forcing myself to do this because I really uh, don't have the energy most of the time to even make videos. I don't know. It feels like a lot of times when you're just trying to be a good person in his life, people are going to consistently, like, I don't know, lower your frequencies. But um, I don't really care about the drama stuff. Let's just get into the... Uh, the list, this discussion. Are uh, starting with the honorable mentions uh, as part of the list. Uh, the fifteen going down is uh, old dads. I thought it was funny. I don't really like comedies usually. I find comedies kind of boring. I mean, not, uh, I just don't find modern comedies funny. I used to love comedy movies, like in the super bad era, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, Pineapple Express and all that. But this modern era comedies has been really bad. Um, but this one, I think, was really relevant. And relatable, and I could tell that the people have this, you know, rival. Like there's like a civil unrest with the traditional way of thinking and a modern way of thinking, and I think both have their toxic and their, you know, their um, healthy, you know, um, uh, attributes. Uh, Bill Burr has stars in this. Uh, I think he's great. Uh, I liked him in The Mandalorian. I thought he was really good in that. Um, I think that, uh, I found this movie kind of creepy at times. Uh, I think around the end, when I was saying everything was all recorded and stuff, and it's like, I mean, that is true. Everything is recorded. Like, I mean, that is true. Is, but it's like, I mean, at the same time, it's like, uh, that's why people need to stop, like, you know, pretending or posing to be someone or not. Because, you know, I think you always have to just be honest either way, because the truth is always going to come out eventually, I guess. But, you know, you have to just live your life honestly. I mean... It's a good message, a good movie, and I think uh, it's kind of underrated. Um, I highly recommend it. This movie is They Clone Tyrone. Um, it stars John Boyega, and uh, Jamie Foxx is in it as well. Um, I watched this movie on Netflix. Um, I thought it was okay. I had an interesting concept. Um, it's nothing really amazing. Um, it's not like I have a large list of movies that I've watched this year anyway. So, um, you know, it's a hard, it was a hard, you know, you know, task to find films um, that I could put up on my list of, you know, best films. But, yeah, this was one of the films I saw and I you know, it stayed 
in a positive light in my memory. Um, I think it just has a good concept. Um, it reminds me of Vision of Body Snatchers at times, but it just kind of suffers from kind of a lackluster, I would say, performance and screenplay. Um, I think that the movie could have done better with more attention on acting from everyone, um, less gimmicky, jokey acting, and less more realistic, you know, acting. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I thought it was good. I think it's a fun concept. I think it's a great movie to watch um, as a movie uh, on a Saturday night, you know, as like a rental kind of film. But, yeah, that's how I feel about that. Creed 3, starring, uh, what was his name, Michael B. Jordan. Um, I saw this movie three times in cinema. First time, I think all the times I watched it, uh, was in 40X. The third time I watched it, I left because, I uh, some, I would say, ignorant folk entered the theater and started, like, like, kind of like, like, like snorting up like snot really loudly and like people were talking loudly in the movie everyone was enjoying it it was like halfway through the movie and it was just so ignorant these people come in late and then start talking loudly and it was just like you spent all this money to go to 40x just to be loud and ignorant i was like i ain't watching this like i get the hell out of here and uh, i just still remember that kind of ruined my whole enjoyment and experience on the film. Um, kind of just makes it worse, like, kind of reminds me of, like, how the theater experience could be a very fragile one. You know, it could be a great experience. That's why, I, like, I love a crowd when everyone's in sync together enjoying a movie, but then I hate the crowd when you got the crowd talking throughout the movie or just being, you know, really obnoxious. But, yeah, I, I, that, was one, that was one time I really, really was annoyed. But I really enjoyed the film. Um, haven't seen it since it, the, the theater experience. I think it just doesn't resonate as much outside of a uh, first viewing. Um, it's not really as strong as original Rocky movies. So, yeah. All righty. Anatomy of a Fall. And mind you all, I am doing this. While I should be sleeping, but um, I will continue anyway. Um, I saw this once, um, and it was a double feature day for me. I just saw, I saw that day, Zone of Interest and Anatomy of Fall, and I was so tired watching this film. I was like, this. I was literally my eyes are burning. I was like, dude. But the movie was so interesting that it kept me awake the entire time. Um, I found this very uh, interesting how it was written. Uh, Sandra Holder is one of my favorite actresses of the year. Uh, I didn't know anything about her until it was on interest. But I definitely really am a fan of her work now. I am excited to see her in anything. Um, if she's in it, I'm definitely just going to check it out because she's just been in masterpieces lately. So, yeah. Um, the movie, but I mean, I just thought the movie was a little, um, I don't know. Eh, it it could have been a little bit more edge to it, a little bit more bite to it. I just felt like it was a little too... It was too much grazing of the surface and like it never really plunged into anything deeper than just kind of like a ideal feeling, you know, like where we're kind of getting. I never felt like I really, I mean, the argument during a court session, I think, was the only time I actually cheered up because the acting was so good. But I don't know. Other than that, I kind of felt like I was kind of getting a little bored and I was like, all right, that's why it's not higher on the list. But yeah, poor things. Uh, I saw this movie once. Um, I really like this movie. 
Um, it's unfortunately not part of my top ten because it just I don't know. Um, I just didn't. I mean, I just saw. I mean, it's a really good movie, but it just doesn't really. It kind of was just like a fun experience. It reminds me just like how Barbie is and how Salt Saltburn because literally they are back to back together. Like the next movies after this is Saltburn and Barbie. Like they're just movies I saw once. It was just a fun experience watching it, but it's not really a movie. I'm like, oh, I have to see that again. Like it's kind of like, and it's not something I really want to see again. It's just like I got what I needed, seen this once. I don't really need to go through it again. Uh, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I mean, Poor Things had a great like trailer and visual aesthetic that I like, and I kind of grown to like this director a lot. Um, uh, I might see it once. I've been thinking about it, but I don't know. It's, it was it was an interesting film. I really enjoyed. Um, I it's the last one. It's eleventh film, so it's the last one on a uh, honorable mentions. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Um, this movie is just really frustrating because it's like, I don't know, it's, I think it has a great concept and I think it could have been a scary movie, uh, in my opinion, an interesting scary film. Um, uh, I, I think that they could have turned this into like a Twilight uh, Zone, um, like creepy night gallery kind of style where you turn the family into a kind of like a, I don't know. I would have just done it into, in a more of like, you know, dust to dawn where you it, it goes goes crazy at the end. Because I think the way it, it ends is kind of like what it was kind of. I didn't. I don't know. I didn't really like the ending of it. But I mean, it was good acting. I think it has a really good atmosphere. Great cinematography. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, get his name. Um, uh, that. Person right here, this actor, I keep forgetting his name. Um, uh, I think his name is Jacob Allori. Uh, he, he's a great actor. Um, I thought he was great in Euphoria. Um, you know, he's just a, he's, I think he's getting better and better as he does bigger and bigger projects. I thought he would have been a better choice than the actor they picked for Superman. I think they could have picked him instead. But um, I think this movie was. A, really good um experiment i don't think it lands quite well um i don't know i think i just find it a little frustrating in the end because it's kind of like it felt like it built up so much just to kind of end like huh <laughs> it's just like i don't know i'm not gonna spoil it but it just ends in kind of like a bizarre way and i'm just like i don't like it. this this just felt like we slapped this together it may have more of a message that I didn't that flew over my head entirely and so I'm not that's why I still on my top 10 so because I feel like there's something there to I would I would definitely like to revisit some again just to um kind of study what you know this study things the you know because it feels like a Shakespeare play really like a modern I would take say it's definitely a great modern Shakespeare play because it could have a better, it could have a better ending All right. <clears throat> yeah, so this is a this is Barbie and it was a movie I saw on HBO Max. I did not see this in the theater because it was just be cringe. And I did I remember when I, I heard about this movie, I was like, Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. They got they're gonna have uh this be basically a a like Vanity Fair for Margot Robbie. I think she exactly really produced it. But, you know, from reviews and everything, I kind of got interested in checking it out because everybody was kind of saying that it's better than, you know, uh, what people thought it would be. And just the trailer had an interesting concept. It felt like a, slap, like a satire rather than some sort of 
Barbie girl movie. It felt more like a satire about femininity and stuff. And I think that was interesting. And it was done by a director who does indie films like Lady Bird. And a movie I still want to watch. I haven't watched a movie. I think I started watching it. I just, I don't know. I, I just stopped. I don't know. A movie has to capture me, but sometimes I have to force myself to get into a film to really understand it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed watching so I saw it once. I thought it was funny. I thought it was very positive and uplifting. Um, I had some bizarre sub-messaging that I will be, like, very questionable of, like, I do you know this stuff propaganda and weird stuff that's in there unnecessary information that we don't need and stuff and it's just like all right can we just make a movie without all this extra stuff that you guys always do in cinema but um yeah it's it's, it was it was all right i enjoyed it all right we're on number eight uh the creator I saw this film twice in the cinema. First time I saw it was with my family. And um, after we ate dinner, um, I thought this movie was really good. I thought, people say it has bad story. I thought it was a good story. I just don't think it, I don't know. I just think that still Jonathan David Washington, John David Washington, I believe the main actor's name is, I still don't think he has work I don't think he has um, found his footing yet as a leading man in cinema. I think he still has a rough time like having screen presence. He was good in it and I think he's better in it than he was in Tenet. Tenet I just thought he was very flat and boring and kind of derailed the film I think for many people. Um, but um, I don't know. I thought this movie was really good. I thought that it was a good story. Let's make sure it wasn't raining. Or not raining, but water wasn't overflowing. But um, I thought it was a good story. I thought the cinematography was really good. The director, um, he's, uh, he's very underrated. I think he deserves to get like more like chances on big films. Even though I feel at times he kind of gets um, sidelined by the studios because it's like even Godzilla, the movie he directed, the first Godzilla, which is, I think, in my opinion, the best one because it takes it seriously. The American Godzilla, um, legendary Godzilla. Um, but I don't know. I feel like he is a great director that needs just the right you know, opportunity and the right, you know, people around him. Um, I think he has a lot to offer and he's just kind of being misused. Um, yeah, I highly recommend people go check this one out. All right. We're John Wick, number seven, John Wick, four. I saw this movie six times in the theater. Um, the, this is uh, the fourth John Wick movie. Um, unfortunately, um, Lance Solomon Riddick passed away, which is very sad. Um, I always enjoyed seeing him in cinema. Um, but this movie was really fun. I, had a, I think it was a great time with the audience watching it. I think three times I saw it. It was like the audience was so invested. People were like, it just felt like, and I saw, I think, the first time 40X, which is so badass. I tried seeing it again for 40X, but I just, I don't know. It was only available for a week in 40X, and then they put some other movie that I forget that was big at the time, but it was shitty, and but it was popular. Like, I guess, not popular, but it was a mainstream film, so they always take over, and they put those in the forefront, like, ugh. But I'm not going to get into it. But, um, yeah, this movie I saw six times. I loved it. Uh, I, I can't wait to see the next one. You know, um, I definitely think they hit the right. Sorry. Mind you, I have to go to work tonight. And I'm doing this at 120. When 120 for me is like work, like 
doing work at 1.20 a.m. in the morning. And this is 1.20 in the afternoon. But anyways, yeah, I highly rec this, recommend this film. I I enjoyed watching it. Um, I just can't wait to see what they do next with this. I think the director is great at capturing action and like wild western kind of vibes. Okay, this one is The Killer. I saw this movie, and this is number six. I'm sorry if I haven't been saying the numbers in order. Hopefully you guys are just keeping track of it mentally in your head. Um, but um, I'm going to try to keep... I'm trying to make sure I say the number four. I, you know, just keep it in order. But... Yeah, I saw this twice, and um, I really enjoyed the the cinematography, the soundtrack. I play the soundtrack sometimes, um, just because I just love how it sounds. Um, I thought this is Michael Fassbender's best performance, in my opinion. I just really, I think he should be 007, honestly. I really liked his performance in this film, and it definitely... They're definitely playing homage to it. There's scenes in here where you definitely see him, like looking like 007. You know, um, I think he's badass. I highly recommend you check out this film. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. Alrighty, we're on the number five, Evil Dead Rise. I saw this movie five times. I really, this is definitely my favorite horror film of the year. Um, I just, I, I love the Evil Dead series. Um, the, I love the Evil Dead, the remake. I love the first Evil Dead with Bruce Campbell. And, um, you know, I just, I'm a huge fan of Evil Dead. Um, I thought the women in this did a great job. Um, uh, it's just and uh, the Australian, uh, the woman who got possessed, uh, she, she was great. I really liked her this way. And talk about screen presence, she has screen presence. I will definitely, I just even the her the actress plays her sister. Uh, I thought it was great. I just thought the film was really good. Um, it didn't look like it was really expensive, but it still had this really good use of like practical and cgi and you know and bottle i think if you call it i'm not going to try to say the term because i might say that's something wrong but um yeah i really like this film i highly recommend it all right number four oppenheimer i saw this will be nine times um, this movie, I did not like this movie when I first watched it. I was going to be honest. I, when I first saw this movie, I enjoyed it after, I enjoyed it up until the scene with Oppenheimer and I, the president talked in the Oval Office. Um, and I thought that's where the movie should have really ended, in my opinion. I think that's really where we should just wrap the movie up. Because it just goes on to like this like courtroom like you know drama kind of thing, and it just gets so tedious. You know that's what it felt like at first, and honestly, even after watching it nine times, I still feel like it's still kind of it's still tedious. This ending part, but I think the you know everything up until that scene with him being present, I enjoy. And I mean, I enjoy it so much that I own it. So, you know, I really like this movie. I highly recommend people check this one out. It's definitely Christopher Nolan's best, one of his best uh, films. Um, I, I definitely, this is probably a film that people will still be talking about years from now. So, yeah, um, thank God for Christopher Nolan. And hopefully Christopher Nolan goes and makes a James Bond film. I really want to see him make a James Bond film. I think that'd be very interesting. 
All right. This movie is the, my number th- three movie. This is my top three. Now we're down to the last three. Um, the Iron Claw. I saw this twice, and I wouldn't mind seeing it again in theaters. Um, it, it definitely is a powerful. I think it's hard for me to watch this a lot because it's so powerful emotionally. Um, I think it's just a really well made film, and it's definitely another triumph for A M A twenty four. I mean, it's I have it's I have two. My top three is A twenty four films. So A twenty four is just just dominating everything. Like I love A twenty four. Like A twenty four. Like I have like a lot of A twenty four. I think on here, but um. Yeah, I really think A24 is becoming a powerhouse in cinema. You know, in a studio that's producing, like, classics, like, real movies, not, like, generic garbage. You know, like, even if it's not something I personally like, I always walk out A24 film feeling like I at least experienced something, you know, worth my time. Not just like, well, I just got robbed. <laughs> it's just not like Birds of Prey. Like, I walked out Birds of Prey. That was the last movie I saw before COVID-19 and theaters were shut down. I was so scared that I was literally that was going to be the last movie I saw. I was like, are you fucking serious? Birds of fucking prey is going to be the last movie I see? Fuck no. I was so depressed. And luckily, theaters came back. And then the first movie I saw was, I think, um, R- Road Rage? No, it's, it's the one with um, Russell Crowe. Um, unhinged, unhinged. People didn't like that movie. I thought it was pretty good. It was really kind of creepy. Um, I thought I thought Russell Crowe was really good in it. And I said, "What am I watching that movie again?" Either I think I did see it again. I went at home, but yeah, it, I liked it. But um, yeah, this movie was beautiful. I thought this movie was really good. Uh, I think it deserves to be on my top three. Um, I thought this was Zac Efron's best performance, um, and I hope he goes on to do more and more like interesting performances like this. Um, yeah, I highly recommend all of you check that out. Oh, now we're at the number two. Now this is my most watched film of the year. The my the number my my. Uh, this is my, this is like, this is my second, on my uh, second place in my, really my list. But honestly, it was a battle, like, for me to think of one. But not really at all, actually. I'm sorry. My number one is just, it's such a perfect film. But honestly, this movie, I saw the most. This movie is groundbreaking. This movie is such a powerful masterpiece of cinema. I loved this movie i saw it last time i saw it in the cinema was in black and white when he was they were doing their last week run um just a shout out to takashi yamazaki thank you so much thank you so much takashi yamazaki please make another one and next can you please bring i want to see a movie with king Ghidorah. king Ghidorah. i want to see his his interpretation of king Ghidorah. oh uh, i just love this movie so much it's so powerful the ending makes me cry so every time because it's such a beautiful, like, I just love seeing everyone come together and work together to, just, like, save the day. And then, like, it's just it's just such a beautiful film. And I think it's such a great message, you know. And I think it shows men in a respectful way and women in a respectful way. Rather than, like, we have to bash men for being masculine and we have to, you know, praise women for being, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, boss bitches. But it's like, you know, I just don't, you know, I just don't, you know think we need to do that i think we need to just be together and unified and just tell stories that are just positive and not with political messaging you know um this is just a great film i just highly recommend it people come out or well i don't know if it it might not be in theaters again but if once it comes out like available to watch or streaming i highly recommend you check it out it's a masterpiece. I, this is one of my favorite films I've ever seen in my life. 
All right, we're at number one, the zone of interest. I saw this movie four times, and I want to see it again. I'm going to see it again this week. I'm probably going to do a video and record myself and experience going to theater. Um, but it's, this movie is fucking amazing. It is definitely one of the greatest films I've ever seen in my life. I just the soundtrack is just gorgeous and haunting and just perfect. The cinematography is just just immaculate and just masterpiece work. Um, um, the acting is just sup superb. Um, everything is just perfect. It's just a masterclass of a film. This is definitely my number one film of the year. Um, I saw this late, you know, and I, Godzilla minus one was going to be my number one. And then I went to, you know, I went to the city and watched this and I was extremely moved in my opinion. I mean, it was not as, I think it gets more and more better as I watch it. Honestly, the first time I watched it, it was like shocking on how like bizarre it was that and I mean, I don't think I re it really resonated as much when I first watched it. I thought it, it kind of just because I kind of I felt like I was kind of falling asleep in the middle part because it was just kind of I didn't know how the story how it was going to play out, and I was like, okay, this is kind of just going on. But then it's like around the ending when I I woke up like I felt more awake like awake because I started thinking I started I think I started put I started to realize what it was going for, and. It really hit me in the ending when it showed like the the Auschwitz concentration camps and you know the gas chamber and all that. And it's the real place. And you're seeing the janitors cleaning it, the ladies cleaning it and stuff. Um, it was really disturbing. Like that shit really like fucked with me. I was like, Jesus Christ, this actually really fucking happened. And if you do research on what happened there and like the call marks on the wall, if you were trying because they were just dying trying to get out of there, it's fucked up, man. It's so dark, and that's why I love this. Even this picture, you know, like this is how the film feels is just blackness, like blackness in the background. It's such a trippy ass image, in my opinion. You know, this is such a great film. Um, definitely one of the best films I have ever seen in my life. I just think it's, it's something I want to keep watching. I just keep wanting to see it again every time. Like, I, I, I enjoy it more and more. Um, yeah. Um, Zone of Interest. John the Glazer, he's uh, definitely one of my favorite directors. Um, I highly recommend you all check this movie out. Um, and yeah, um, give me one second. And uh, yep, that's it. I uh, 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 list of the. Top 10 best films of 2023. Um, I just really wanted to just go ahead and just punch through and get this out there. Um, I even took the time to write all this down and even remember, remember all the times I, you know, watched it. Like, I even wrote it down, you know. So, you know, um, and I'm going to try to do the top 10 worst films of 2023. And it's going to be movies I haven't seen because I don't, like, when if I see a trailer for a movie that's really bad, I'm not going to go and watch it because it's, like, an insult to my fucking intelligence. And I do not want to bother myself by sitting through something that I couldn't even bear to sit through the trailer of, like, Madam Web. No, fuck Madam Web. I don't even want to watch it because it's just, it's, it's just disrespect to cinema. It's disrespect to comic books. It's disrespect to women. It was like women get their first Spider-Man movie, live action movie, and it's this shit. This is like the worst Spider-Man anything. This is not even fuck Spider-Man. This is a bad movie in general. Just from the trailer, like that should should have never even re been released. It's almost like why are you releasing this knowing that theaters are dying? It's like this is the type of shit that helps theaters die because people are gonna be like, this is the state of how it was gonna be made, or we're going we're going backwards to. It's like, uh, but that was my top 10. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. 
Uh, I highly appreciate everyone here. Um, I'm going to try to make more videos on time. Um, and uh, as always, may the force be with you. Peace and out.